What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is Thirsty Thursday, and we're getting closer and closer to free agent frenzy. And, you know, I'm going to probably be out on a, a limb by myself on this one, but you know, we've got the Eagles, of course, that are getting crazy. There's a couple of reports that are saying that the Eagles are interested in signing Saquon Barkley, um, you know, which typically would be an Eagles move. And, you know, we've heard rumors that, you know, people are saying that he should go to the Cowboys and things. But I, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I'm not sure that, that Saquon isn't what I call a name player at this point. Because what I want you to understand, I know he was on a bad team last year. I know he was on a bad team. But the thing with Saquon, who averaged 3.9 yards a carry last year, I know bad offensive line, bad team. I get that. I get that, right? But 962 yards. Now, I can't honestly look and say we had a great offensive line, although some people would probably dispute that. Um, Tony Pollard actually had better numbers than Saquon. And here's the thing with Saquon. Do you realize that Saquon last year had one 100-yard game? Let me say that again. He had one 100-yard game, and that was in week uh, October 29th, 128 yards. Every other game, it's kind of pedestrian. And here's the thing that you really, I think, have to worry about if you're talking about Saquon is it seems like as the season goes on, his numbers go downhill. When you look at when he played week one against us, you know, he had 12 carries, 51 yards, 4.3 yards a carry. Uh, week two against Arizona, uh, 63 yards, 3.7. Um, against Buffalo, um, 93 yards, 3.9. Uh, against Washington, 77 yards, 3.7. Um Against the Jets, he had that one 100-yard game, 36 carries, 128 yards. You had the Raiders, 5.6 yards a carry, great game, 80 yards. You had us, the second to go around, 5.1 yards carry, 66 yards. You had Washington, 5.9. Now, here's where it gets to be kind of dicey. They start taking on New England, you know, 11.26 around Thanksgiving, 3.8. And then Green Bay, the last over four yards of carry game he had was early December. From that point on, you start looking. New Orleans, 1.6 yards, 14 yards on nine carries. Um, the Eagles, 80 yards, 3.5. Uh, the Rams, 39 yards, 3.3. And against the Eagles, uh, 46 yards on 2.6 yards of carry. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie to you and say that Saquon when he's on his game, isn't really, really good. Because he is. He is really good. But I'm not sure that, one, I still have injury concerns because he's had some injuries that have been back in there. And, two, I'm not sure that he's really that much different than what you get with Tony Pollard. Now, call me an idiot. I, call me an idiot. But I'm telling you, a better fit for me is Derrick Henry, who's more of a bruiser between the tackles. And I think Derrick Henry may cost you less than what Saquon would do. And I think that durability-wise, I think Derrick Henry would be a better fit. Now, I I don't know what the chances of us signing anybody beyond a bottom-tier free agent would be. But I know this much. Derrick Henry, in short yardage, I'll take him over Saquon. Derrick Henry, between the tackles... And being able to hold up, I'll take him. Saquon, he's more like Tony Pollard. He's a great guy who, if he gets the ball in space and he's got one-on-ones with, you know, cornerbacks and things like that, yeah, he's going to be dynamic. And he's going to have, you know, one of those home run plays, you know, a game. But I don't think it's what everybody thinks that you're going to be getting. Um, for my money, I'm looking more at Derrick Henry. Now, ultimately... If you ask me what my dream would be, as we hear that the Cowboys, you know, are, are open to the idea of Tony Pollard coming back and that Tony Pollard is open to the idea that he might take 
a little bit less to come to the Cowboys than going somewhere else. If you were to get Tony Pollard with Derrick Henry and get back to that dynamic that you had, because here's the thing about running backs, and this is part of the reason why the change in the dynamics of running backs is because when you have a guy who gets the lion's share of the load, you only have so many hits that your body can take. And so if you pay a Saquon Barkley and he's going to get the ball, you know, 20, 25 times or 20 touches a game, by the time the season starts to wear down, they're worn out. And we have seen that with Zeke Elliott. The last time you saw a running game really effective or most effective was you had Zeke Elliott being able to run between the tackles about 15 times. And you had Tony Palmer, Tony Pollard being a third down you know, specialist more than anything else and being that gadget guy. See, that's what Tony Pollard does the best. If you could get Tony Pollard for about 5 or $6 million to come back and then end up getting a Derrick Henry for about 6 or 7 and have that as your backfield, then you have the best of both worlds because now you got Tony Pollard back to doing what made him special and you've got Derrick Henry taking on the Zeke Elliott role of being that bull in a ring that's going to get you those short yardage. And ultimately, if you're talking about going all in and making a difference, that would make a major difference on this team. Now, I don't know that the Cowboys have the wherewithal or the desire to make a move like that. Um, I still believe that Saquon is more a name player that people will say, oh, my God, I, I just don't think he has it like he used to. And if you go back, here's the thing about Saquon. If you go back the year before, his first game of the season was a monster game. But he kind of tailed off, and that's one of the reasons why the Giants looked at him and said, you know, I don't know that we want to have a long-term deal because he faded down the stretch. And that's when you need that guy the most is down the stretch. So we'll see what happens as far as that goes. Um, there are some incredible players that are out there right now. You're seeing some teams that are having to just gut their rosters uh, because of um, the Denver going all in and getting Russell Wilson, you're seeing them kind of gutting some players. Justin Simmons, line, uh, safety out there. There are some incredible safeties out there in the market. There's so many of them that the price might be depressed some because there's so many options. And, you know, we're seeing the Buffalo Bills basically leave Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen and restructuring Von Miller. Um, seeing those guys trying to field a team. And another interesting thing to me is looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, which are about the same spot we are as far as cap space goes, that nobody's talking about um, their quarterback's contract. Yeah, Pat Mahomes is only a million dollars less than what Dak Prescott's contract number is. And they probably need to do something as well as Deshaun Watson who's $62 million with the Cleveland Browns. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. And keep, keep spreading the mojo. Peace.